happened too. One of the most extraordinary things about the Lower Congo River is that it isn't just a, a band of water. It's an incredibly complex hydrological system. And in that unique stretch of river are found some of the most extraordinary fishes on Earth and the most incredible numbers of species of fish. Now we think, it's our hypothesis, that it's that complexity of hydrology that's really the key to understanding why there are so many different species of fish here. To me, one of the most important things is, when we look at these rapids, I want to know how deep all of that goes. Because, you know, it's possible that that could be a surface phenomenon. And it may well be that for the fishers here, they can swim underneath that. I don't know. And that's exactly what we're going to find out with this equipment. What's going on? We're setting up the instruments to start recording data. Everything's on. We're just setting a file name for the echo sounder. It's, it's all powered, all running. It's, uh, we got about 20 seconds and we're have lift off. It's huge and it feels like when you paddle up to just the beach right here, it feels like an ocean because the waves are just crashing in and breaking like an ocean. So we want to get it out and make sure things are on and running. This is the depth data from the echo sounder, and as we were scrolling across, it was pretty shallow, and all of a sudden the depth line just dropped off the screen. Obviously, he went over some major hole, so it's uh, but it's 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 beautiful. Papa, Is everybody possible? This is what the local people here call Mondelli Bureau. It's a completely blind, depigmented cichlid fish. We only ever find them dead. We've never caught one. They just wash up dead because we think they're living very, very deep down in a canyon that's out there in the river that Ned and John are going to be mapping for us. They're going to be able to tell us exactly how big the canyon is and how deep it is. What you got? 495 feet. 5, 5, 5, so John just tells me that we're sitting over a 530 foot hole right here. Very calm water, not much going on, but that's it's pretty cool. It's gonna go back to the, the boat right now is hovering over the center of a whirlpool, so we're just spinning around and around. As you traverse this river, you'll see whirlpools that form and dissipate with radii of literally hundreds of feet sometimes. This one is about 20, 30 feet across. So we're just spinning with this whirlpool. These things form, they arise, they dissipate because of the huge depth of the chasm below us. This was the impressive one, because we're cruising along at about 415 feet and then it drops off to 550 plus so we got this it's like a big crack oh so that's where they find Mondelli Bureau right in here right at the cliff yeah, it's that sheer wall that comes down that is pretty cool that was pretty that's cool. I mean the velocity was extreme in there it's yeah, pretty fast 10 to 14 feet a second so the red and the yellow yep. are the fastest right. What we're finding here are walls of water. Velocities at the surface going in one direction extremely fast, go down to 100 meters, and they're going extremely fast in the opposite direction. So there's this cacophony of water and mountains and troughs. It's a wild, wild place. And what we think is really happening 
is this tremendous river topology is actually serving to isolate fish populations. And that's really weird, because we always think river's water, and if you've got water, a fish can swim in it. So you're going to have no difference from one side of the river to the other side of the river, because fish can swim across. Turns out not to be the case in the lower Congo. There are certain species that we're looking for, so we will sample tissues of those first. Oh, look at this. The supposed to the frontier pure. Oh, no, no, some part of it. It may vary up for key. This is 218. Okay, so then I'm going to take a fin from which we can extract DNA. We get some specimens from this side of the river, we look at them, we say, oh, we know what that is. We go to the other side of the river, we collect the same species, we look at the specimens, we say, oh, it's the same thing. But when we go back to the lab, and we start analyzing the DNA, we find, no, 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 they're not the same thing, they're distinct. Once we have acquired all of this genetic information, we're able to reconstruct trees of relationships for these species that suggest that the diversification in Lower Congo is ongoing. This tree shows the relationships of populations of Teleogramma brichardi collected on opposite banks of the Congo, separated by less than two kilometers. Here, we can view it in a little bit different way. This is a haplotype tree, and each circle is proportional to the number of individuals with the same genetic signal. And the lines represent the distance between them. This says 122. Out of a couple of thousand nucleotides sequenced, there are 122 mutations separating the Le Rapide population from the opposite bank population at Kinsuka, and this is greater than 5% sequence divergence, which is extremely surprising for two populations of a species that look exactly the same. You can see how yeah. complex it is. The water is moving at so many angles. It, and at quite high velocities. At very high velocities. It's going to be really great to be able to correlate some of the genetics that Bob's been doing with now what we know about the um, river in this region. Within the trees that we've generated of species found in the Lower Congo, we do see a number of patterns emerging that roughly correspond to hydrologic features in the system. And there's a very strong implication that hydrologic features are serving as barriers and driving diversification. Speciation, to a large extent, is driven by isolation. If two populations don't reproduce with each other, then over time, genetic changes will accumulate and they diverge. They may not look that different, but genetically, their genes are clicking away and they're changing. So it's almost as if we're getting a window into that speciation process. It hasn't yet happened with a lot of these fish species, but it's on the way to happening. Species are evolving all the time in this system. That explains why there are so many species there. So really, we have this just wonderful system. It's a magical place, and it's a terrific place for really studying evolution in action.